Good morning. Uh, today's Sunday school lesson comes from 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, Peter was writing this letter to the Christian converts in Asia Minor. His audience probably consisted of, of refugees who were seeking asylum from the growing threats during Nero's reign as, as emperor. But there were also threats from radical Jews who considered these Christians to be undermining the religious heritage and the laws of Judaism. These people in Asia Minor needed encouragement to ward off their fear. They needed to know they were not abandoned even though their faith was being tested. They needed to feel the presence of God and have a voice of hope reminding them of the future glory that they would all share. Uh, I recently read Reverend Arthur Holt's new book entitled People of My Journey, in which he talked about people he had met along his ministry. There were short profiles and recollections of friends and acquaintances who had impacted his life. And his accounts of, of these interactions with, with these people are good reminders that each of us need to, to stay connected with the people that we've interacted with throughout the course of our lifetime. And these people may have had a, a tremendous influence on us along the way. Too often, perhaps, we take these associations for granted and we never share our appreciation to these special friends. I'm afraid that I've reached the age when many of the people that encouraged me, tolerated me, or attempted to modify my actions or ideas have faced or are facing problems and circumstances that seem to come with the aging process. Sometimes I've been guilty of just sending a generic get well card, but I'm trying more and more to send friendship cards and enclose notes reminding folks about events or special times we've enjoyed together. Over a month before my friend's 100th birthday, a sequence of illnesses began to, to take their toll. She had spent most of her time in bed, too weak to walk without assistance, and needed in-home caregivers. Of course, some of the people from her church would send their get well cards, but I made a few phone calls and personally spoke to, to some of the church leaders, including the children's minister. I asked them to, <clears throat> to start sending birthday cards instead of get well wishes, so she would see upbeat messages that would perhaps help her daily outlook. The idea took hold, and the mailbox would be filled each day with joyful and cheerful birthday greetings. She had each card taped to her bedroom door, and then the doors to her closet, and any available space as our goal for a hundred cards for the hundredth birthday was quickly surpassed. And when her birthday arrived, she sat outside in the sunshine as a caravan of cars and a busload of friends dropped by to sing happy birthday and personally congratulate her. Well, I want to read now our scripture passage, 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 16. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. On account of his vast mercy, he has given us new birth. You've been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You have a pure and enduring inheritance that cannot perish, an inheritance that is presently kept safe in heaven for you. Through his faithfulness, you are guarded by God's power so that you can receive the salvation he's ready to reveal in the last time. You now rejoice in this hope even if it's necessary for you to be distressed for a short time by various trials. This is necessary so that your faith may be found genuine. 
your faith is more valuable than gold, which will be destroyed even though it itself is tested by fire. Your genuine faith will result, <clears throat> will result in praise, glory, and honor for you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've never seen him, you love him. Even though you don't see him now, you trust him and so rejoice with a glorious joy that is too much for words. You are receiving the goal of your faith, your salvation. The prophets who long ago foretold the grace that you received, searched and explored, inquiring carefully about this salvation. They wondered what the Spirit of Christ within them was saying when he bore witness beforehand about the suffering that would happen to Christ and the glory that would follow. They wondered what sort of person or what sort of time they were speaking about. It was revealed to them in their search that they were not serving themselves, but you. These things which even angels long to examine have now been proclaimed to you by those who brought you the good news. They did this in the power of the Holy Spirit who was sent from heaven. Therefore, once you have your minds ready for action and you are thinking clearly, place your hope completely on the grace that will be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Don't be conformed to your former desires, those that shaped you when you were ignorant. But as obedient children, you must be holy in every aspect of your lives, just as the one who called you is holy. It is written, you will be holy because I am holy. In this letter, Peter is attempting to address the doubts and concerns that have emerged among Christians that have been exiled to the eastern provinces of the Roman Empire, which is present-day Turkey. Verses 3 through 5 point out three components of the new birth that Christians share as a result of God's vast mercy. One, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. Two, a pure and enduring inheritance that cannot perish. And three, the insurance that we are guarded by God's power. Peter explains that the full extent of the salvation we've received from God will not be made clear in this lifetime. However, nothing can or ever will diminish the glory of that salvation. And in the meantime, God promises to take care of us which means that the full gift of God's salvation will await us. We will not miss out on receiving it. That living hope has been verified based on the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The inheritance we are promised is preserved for us in heaven. There are no earthly boundaries that could, could place limitations on it. The salvation we currently experience is just partial, a kind of down payment on what one day we will enjoy. So we should not be discouraged by present suffering. Greater glory and the full extent of our salvation awaits us in heaven. Verses 6 and 7 remind us that adversity may be painful for us but we need to realize that our lives and our relationship with God may be stronger as a result. Just as gold is purified, so may our lives be refined as we are tested by the fires of tribulation. In verse 8, Peter affirms to his readers that they are to be blessed because they have faith in Jesus even though they may never have personally seen him with their own eyes. Remember that Jesus shared these words with the disciples after revealing himself to Thomas. Not being an eyewitness has not prevented them from witnessing to others and allowing their faith to be a living testimony. The author then reveals the connection of his audience to the prophets of the Old Testament who foretold the grace that Jesus would bring to the world. 
the grace that these readers had explored through study and testimony and prayer. The prophets could only have wondered as they were offering their visions and prophecies to future generations when this Messiah would present himself. Now that time had come for the disciples and with the ascension of Jesus, the Holy Spirit now led them to share the news of salvation to an awaiting world as they asked people to have their minds ready to follow them in accepting the gospel of Jesus. In verse 13, the recipients of the letter are reminded of their present responsibility to remain strong in their faith and to have their hopes based completely on the grace that Jesus would provide. Peter then further encourages them to remain steadfast and not relapse or be swayed by their former desires in a time when they were ignorant of the virtues of trying to, to live a Christ-like life. He urged them to be holy because God is holy. In other words, their lives and actions should depict mercy, unconditional love, and ethical purity. He said, follow the example that Jesus provided. Show your love of God through your actions and by the way you treat others. Last Sunday afternoon, I attended the funeral service of my 100-year-old friend. She had passed away exactly one month after her 100th birthday. She had intentionally left the plans for her funeral in the hands of her family because she wanted them to find comfort in the service. There were two songs, however, that she asked to be included. For years, one of her sons performed with a local group. When these guys first got together, they decided their music should bring joy and comfort and just plain fun to the audience and that would invite them to perform. So at nursing homes, reunions, church picnics, and other similar venues, the Saggy Bottom Boys have entertained a growing number of fans. They've even presented a, a recent tribute performance at a birthday party for a 100-year-old lady. Now, they were asked to sing at a funeral. One of the songs was a traditional hymn, I'll Fly Away, uh, one of this lady's favorites. And the other was a song that probably isn't heard at many funerals. But for this one, it was just perfect. I want you to consider the words of the final verse and chorus to this particular song. When I'm gone, long gone. And when we're, when we're walking together in glory, hand in hand through eternity, it's the love that will be remembered, not wealth not poverty. And when we're gone, long gone, the only thing that will have mattered is the love that we shared and the way that we cared when we're gone, long gone. Somehow, I think this message would have echoed Peter's words of encouragement to a church that was being disheartened as he urged the people to care for one another, to reflect God's love in their actions, and to prepare for a glorious reunion in heaven. May we pray together. Dear God, please help us to make the most of each day by sharing your love with one another and anticipating the glory that awaits us. Amen.